Hello, my loves. I'm Ellie Frost. Thank you so much for being here. Um, we're talking about narcissistic abuse and a multidimensional approach to healing, which in my world is very fast, right? And involves a spiritual awakening, a consciousness elevation, as well as very fast ways to cure PTSD, not just manage it, work on your conscious and subconscious reprogramming. And I don't teach so far that I can go into strategies to deal with and cope with the narc. I do talk about communication. I will teach you those things. But I think a lot of us know about the grey rock method and stonewalling and stuff like that. The thing is, right, when you're in, obviously, like, the goal is to get them out of your life. And if you're in a work environment or a marriage or co-parenting, yes, then use those strategies, right? But you want to use the diffusing communication statements I'm talking about and understand the energetics so that you're not being siphoned. You're getting energetically strong and not siphoned. But there are a lot of things that, like, are, I believe, just encouraging the trauma response. So when you're in narcissistic abuse, right, or any kind of abuse, what we have to do to survive is minimise it. So as a child, when I was going through an abusive household, I had to make it not a big deal. In fact, as a little girl, it's the only way, right? Because if I, if I consciously acknowledged what was going on, it was too much. So I made up a kind of lie in my mind that I, my family loved me, which really wasn't what they were showing me but I made that up because that's the only way I could survive and I had to I had to figure out a way to cope and so subconsciously that coping mechanism was like I'm okay I can handle it like I can handle it and and to handle that I had to pretty much disassociate from my feelings and my true self and just be what they needed to me to be and walk on eggshells and do what I needed to do to get by which was kind of like stonewalling and grey walking and just not being myself and being as quiet and and you know just basically not existing as much as possible unless they needed me for something but that's not how we want to live we want to live in our authentic power now like so we do need to use strategies to deal with them but our ultimate goal is to create our authentic lives and these people can't coexist with that once you're an energetic match to something better you really will end up just effortlessly it, it just can't exist in your life in a different way so the elevation of consciousness that i focus on and the awakening is that once you elevate that way you there's no room for these people but you don't have to even push them out like when i get you energetically strong going no contact is a just a natural progression not something you have to even force right because you're not forcing yourself now if you're in a dangerous situation i mean all situations of narcissists are dangerous to be honest the longer they go on but like you have to get out um as soon as you can but if you work on yourself and the things i'm teaching you so that you're regulated there won't be such an emotional crash when you leave it will be much more seamless and you'll be able to rebuild quicker but there are some things that go around right so when we've been in abuse we have to minimize it as a survival strategy that's one thing another thing is that We get a high pain threshold, right? So we're used to things being tough. We're used to a high level of pain. And so that can make us like, almost like, I. so we disassociate and become numb, but we also, we'd have like a very high pain threshold, right? Not a, I don't even know what word to use because there's no kind of normal in the world, is there? But like, an extreme version of how much we can take. Sometimes we think, well, if I'll test myself and see if I've healed enough, see how much I can take. And another thing is because we've got such a high, high tolerance level now, even though it's still damaging us, it's still traumatizing us, it's still making us physically sick, right? Spiritually sick, physically sick, the whole thing. We, we don't even know what is completely inappropriate because we've been so invaded and so violated in our boundaries and and what we should have to take. We're used to a level of permanent suffering, right? And misery. So just become aware that like, we wanna start actually being more aware of our wants and needs and how we'd love to be treated. Like I teach people, you know, energetic matches and manifestation, and that's about desires and what we want to experience, right? Not what we get to tolerate or what we can tolerate. They're two very different things. And secondly, it's like some things that people say like, my narc, my narc, like it's a cute fuzzy pet when you're working with a demon, something that will literally rip your life apart, physically, emotionally, sexually, spiritually, in every way, 
um, nervous system dysregulation over time creates many physical ailments, many. Most people that I know that I work with and that talk to me about narcissistic abuse have manifested physical disease, autoimmune, so many things, right? My body started breaking down after a while in um, a couple of these relationships. It's a dangerous game. So it's not a cute fluffy pet and it shouldn't be given a pet name because we're doing this minimization of this is a fucking joke. This is a disaster. This is a really toxic, t it's an act of, I don't know what words I can use. I'll say tyranny. It should be criminal. It's as much as an assault on your system as any kind of physical hit. In fact, probably more because the long lasting events of psychological um, and emotional abuse and psychic abuse in this instance, right, tends to cause damage on every level of the body. Not just if you got hit and it would be your physical body, which can cause long-term damage, that I, I understand. But like the kind of psychic attack, spiritual attack, emotional, you know, mental, sometimes physical, but will result in physical if you're in emotional and psychic trauma for a long time, right? Some of this go is now very long-lasting damage. So we don't want to use a pet name. My narc. This, I would rather call it it. I'm been using it on my videos because it the narcissist is a soul detached entity, so they dehumanize you. And I think, that, well, no, the reason they do that is because they project everything they are onto you, and they're dehumanized. They're detached from their soul, lack of empathy, devoid of emotion. So I'd rather you said it, and not my narc. You know. A lot of people are saying things like that we make excuses for the people we ha we keep the secrets for the people we love and we um, and again don't share secrets outside safe spaces otherwise you can be manipulated but we also minimize what it is we don't say this is absolutely terrible we lose track of what's terrible behavior and what's not we're just so numbed out and no and trauma is just normalized and then it gets worse and worse and worse over time but it's kind of dangerous to give this a pet name or to t or to not see it for what it is how serious it is you don't want to wait if you're not at the stage yet where you are suffering from autoimmune, I mean, where your finances have been crushed where you are in a complete trap and a bind that you can't get out of but many of us will be so let's not minimize how awful this is because part of the wake up part of the elevation of consciousness is to say this is vilely unacceptable this is such a this is you know as serious as if i've been violently assaulted every day because it is that the damage it's doing to your nervous system the financial damage it's like theft on every level like you know like we need to see it as a serious thing because it is a serious thing i'm not trying to scare you because i also believe in building your best life and actually i can teach you how to cope with whatever situation you're in and radically shift yourself through it so it's not that you can't change it but minimizing it is an absolute issue and is a trauma response it's a real big deal and if you think take it lightly and you're still like well i'm enjoying the sex and i'm enjoying the highs and lows look you're playing a very dangerous game because we all thought we could have got out of it and we all thought we weren't so hooked but it's really dangerous it's giving you a physical addiction it's a pull on such a level it gets worse they'll push your boundaries worse that you're under an illusion you're under an attack that you're not equipped to deal with especially not on the psychic and spiritual level right so oh the other one i wanted to mention in this video people in the industry i think are teaching people a lot well they're just kids they're just kids having a temper tantrum Children are generally innocent, and yes, they act out and they might be sport brats, but that is so far from what a narcissist is. I don't think it's healthy to compare these demons to children. They're, these are adults, not just adults, but ex one of the most, if not, I think, well, actually, let's say it, the truth. They are the most destructive energy on the planet. They are nothing like children having a temper tantrum. We can all have a sport brat day. Right, we can all lose our crap and like act like a bit of a sport brat and have a bit of a flip out. That is so different to a narcissist. Let's stop comparing them to children. They are not a child having a temper tantrum. They are not a child that's just got unhealed wounds. There are plenty of children with unhealed wounds that are not narcissists, probably every single person here. And there are plenty of people with unhealed childhood wounds, which is most of the planet, that don't end up in a narcissistic abusive cycle. They are nothing like children. They, and children just, you know, children are innocent and they haven't learned how to behave. A narcissist is a demonic, destructive entity and we've got to see it for what it is. They are nothing like children having a temper tantrum. 
They're not just a sport brat that didn't get their way. They have a highly destructive energy aimed like a missile to start detonating everything in your life. Nothing like a child. A child is just trying to get its own way and act out. A narcissist is a manipulative, demonic entity aiming to destroy you in every way. And over time, at the beginning, you won't see it. But over time, if you're really with a narcissist, you will see it. And you'll suddenly find that your eyes age from your friends and family and everything that you loved is now tarnished in some way because they'll strip the joy out of everything that gives you pleasure. Anything that you do enjoy is used against you or used to addict you like sex, like pleasure, like anything. And your life will get worse and worse and worse and everything will get destroyed and you won't be able to achieve your goals and dreams. You won't even remember them anymore because your life has got so crap and all you can do is hope to survive because you're in the survival mode and just keep dealing with what you've got every day. This is nothing like a child and it's not a cuddly little pet that gets to be called my, my nut. If anything, I'd say it. It's an entity. Soul detached, soul detached human shell being run by an entity which is a which is a form of consciousness love is a form of consciousness they've sold out to the devil they're going with the dark side and they are cooperating and choosing it every day they are entitled to they believe they're entitled to you your life force your resources to suck you dry and to ch chuck you as as if you were a piece of trash the minute that you've got nothing else that they want and then when you rebuild yourself come back and hoover you and suck it all again nothing like a child nothing like a child i don't care which psychologist is saying that it's absolute b rubbish and i think it's damaging so you've got a high pain threshold you've got to come back into your bodies and start feeling your needs and making you yourself matter and your basic just human needs matter right we've got to co stop <laughs> calling them children or giving them pet names right it's not healthy, it's not good, I don't care who, what, ca I mean, someone wrote on my channel, I couldn't believe it, how she had gone to counselling, I can believe it, but I've been in counselling for a year, I got in a really good place, I met my ex for the first time, I was all happy and made up, and then he basically beat the crap out of her, I was like, that counsellor did you no good, she didn't tell you the truth, she doesn't have, and don't blame her, she doesn't have this knowledge, right, she doesn't have this awareness, but for goodness sake, if you're going to counselling for a whole year, by the way, I work with people in short containers, they transform way before a year, but the point is this, right, if all they've done is make you feel better and drop your guilt and shame, and you are still believing that your next move, when you are healthy and vibrant and right, is to go back to your abuser, who's definitely going to do something worse, and in this lady's case, then beat the crap out of her, that counsellor needs to learn something else. That's not it. You're not healed if you're going back to that person. Especially not now you're full of, you know, that now they're going to knock you down even further. This is a disaster. So we've got to stop it. Just because people in the industry or have read a textbook think this is great doesn't mean it. it is actually helpful for the human being, actually helpful for your soul and spirit. And look, a lot of you have been doing this methods for a long time and nothing's changed. People in my world, they change fast. People just come and listen to the videos of the channel are saying they feel different. They're actually taking themselves back and their lives back. What you're doing hasn't been working and a lot of it isn't, isn't the thing. They haven't cracked the code, right? Which is why I've come and done this and sharing it. And I'm sure other people are too. They're not doing it in a way that's taking into account what it really is. And actually some of the things that they're teaching, I don't think it's on purpose, but it's still not helpful. They are not children in any way. They're not a cuddly little pet. And let's stop, let's lose the trauma response of minimizing this, what this is. That's a trauma response that we do for survival because if we have, you know, at a certain point in life, you can't admit how bad it is. I've done that many times because it's the only way to heal. Like I've had terrible, like when my body was um, degenerating, I had to just pretend it wasn't a big deal because if anyone looked at me, they were like, you're about to die. Like I was just like, okay, no, that's not my reality, right? I had to heal. I had to channel something else. Now that was, that was for a particular purpose. But, you know, if I had... I couldn't have overridden what was going on in my body through manifestation if I had continued to indulge in what was the root cause. The root cause of all your distress, stress, nervous system dysregulation, in the end, definitely physical illnesses, more than likely lack of opportunities, lack of abundance, lack of finances is the narcissist in your life. Not a child having a tantrum, a hugely destructive energy on the planet and not a feathery little pet that you get to be in a club of people with where you go, well, you can, but it's not going to help you. It's not going to help your life when you're in the club just talking about your narc 
and comparing notes as if it's some kind of little pet that you keep that is not a completely dangerous, like a dangerous force in your life. So I wanted to share that. Yeah, it's not going to be conventional here. It's going to be real and it's going to be true because I help people shift fast. They don't come to me for a year at all. They shift really fast in my world because I know what I'm talking about. I know how to do it and I don't buy into any of the BS. And people that have been in therapy for years, it's not working for you. It's not working for you. Otherwise, you'd be healed. It's not working for you if you've still got anxiety. It's not working for you if you've still got PTSD. It's not working for you if you're still stressed. That's the fact. All right, my loves. Lots of love. I'll speak to you soon.